The secrets and easter eggs just keep coming for Pokemon Legends Arceus. I have already made three whole videos on this topic for this game, and yet I just continue to keep finding really, really cool things that are hidden all throughout this game seemingly every time I pick it up to play. And that is exactly why we are going to be going over 10 more awesome secrets and easter eggs from Pokemon Legends Arceus in this video. You guys already know the drill by this point, obviously, so without further ado, let's get into it. Starting us off, the first easter egg I have to share can be found within the Galaxy Team Headquarters. If you go into this building and then enter into the room of the Construction Corps, you will find Sanqua, who is the Construction Corps' leader. Just by looking at her, you can tell that she is an ancestor to Karen of the Elite Four from Pokemon Gold and Silver, so she's kind of an easter egg of her own, but on top of this, if you take a look at the room of the Construction Corps itself, you will clearly be able to see that it is largely colored purple, which is the same color that is used for Karen's room in the Elite Four in Pokemon Gold and Silver. It doesn't stop there though, because this particular room of the headquarters is used as a part of a side quest, and this side quest would have to do with a particular member of the Construction Corps and their Eevee. Within the side quest, their Eevee goes missing, and eventually you find it within the Construction Corps room in the Galaxy Team headquarters, except it is evolved into an Umbreon. The Eevee appearing within this room and then also evolving into an Umbreon is most likely yet another reference to Sanqua and her connection to Karen as one of the Pokemon that Karen uses in Gold and Silver and the remakes is an Umbreon. This one is pretty subtle and can be really easy to miss if you're not paying extra close attention, and this game is absolutely filled with easter eggs and references just like this. One of these, though, that doesn't really appear within the game itself, at least not that I have seen, has to do with Hisuian Typhlosion. Hisuian Typhlosion gains the Ghost type in its new regional variant form, and something peculiar about it that's mentioned on the official Pokemon Legends website has to do with its ghostly flames that wrap around its neck. The website specifically mentions that it uses 108 Ghost Flames to attack its opponents, and this number is very significant because it's the same number of spirits that Spiritomb, also a Sinnoh Pokemon, is comprised of. Given that we're talking about the number 108 and ghostly spirits, there is obviously some kind of connection to Spiritomb here, but this particular detail about Hisuian Typhlosion, again as far as I've seen within the game, doesn't actually appear within the game at all, it's only on the website where this is specified. So what could this mean exactly? Is this just a simple reference to Spiritomb? Is there actually some kind of connection between these two Pokemon? This one is one that I unfortunately have to leave open-ended, so you guys are going to have to let me know all of your thoughts about this in the comments below. Our next entry on the video also has to do with another Hisuian form, and this would be the white-striped form of Basculin. This is the form of Basculin that you need to catch if you want to get a Bascu Legion, as the white form of Basculin specifically is the one that evolves into this new Pokemon. And arguably just as interesting as that evolution is the fact that with the introduction of the white striped Basculin, we now have red, white, and blue striped forms of this Pokemon, with those three colors obviously being the colors of the American flag, which is all in reference to Basculin being a Unova Pokemon, and Unova of course being based on the United States of America, which is a really, really cool reference to make, and so I'm glad they took advantage of the opportunity to do so. Up next is another really, really cool one that can also be really, really easy to never even notice at all. 
If you go to the title screen for this game, because yes, it has a title screen, which is a big reason why this particular thing could be missed in the first place, but if you go to the title screen and then leave it to sit there for a bit, you will begin to hear the iconic Pokemon theme itself that plays on all of the title screens of the various games in one version or another. It seems to be the case, though, that you also have to complete the entire game in order for this theme to play, including beating Arceus. So not only is this really easy to miss just because the title screen is really easy to miss, but you also have to beat literally the whole game and post-game to even be able to hear it at all, which makes it a really, once again, subtle type of detail, but it is a beautiful detail nevertheless. Moving along, we now have something to do with the Pokedex. As you are catching Pokemon throughout the game and filling up the various pages of the Pokedex, you are inevitably going to come to Lucario, and once you complete Lucario's Pokedex entry, you'll actually find a really interesting detail. Because if there's one thing about Lucario that is very well known, it is its ability to use its aura power, which is a fairly significant thing not only for for Lucario itself, but also within the entire Pokemon world in general. This is why it's very interesting to note that according to Lucario's Pokedex entry in this game, Professor Laventon is actually the one responsible for calling this mysterious power Aura in the first place. So who would have thought after all of these years of learning and speculating about this mysterious aura power that we actually had Professor Laventon to thank for it being called Aura in the first place. This next one has to do with one of the fan favorite characters from Legends Arceus, and that would be Ingo. In this game, Ingo went from being the fairly unimportant leader of the battle subway in Unova to a time traveler who is central to the plot. What adds to the intrigue of Ingo's story, though, is that he shares the trait of being someone who has fallen through a dimensional rift and lost their memories with Annabelle from Pokemon Sun and Moon. And what makes this even more intriguing is that these characters are two of the only characters known to have experienced something like this, and are also both leaders of a battle facility, with Ingo once again leading the battle subway and Annabelle leading the battle tower within the battle frontier. These characters are also both drastically changed in their roles within their new setting, becoming important to the story, as previously mentioned, when before they weren't really very much so, and also taking up a leadership role within some kind of organization, with Ingo being a warden for the Pearl Clan and Annabelle being a high-ranking member of the International Police. Following Ingo and his mysterious connection to Annabelle is yet another interesting one that has to do with the beginning of Legends Arceus. It also has to do with Commander Commodo and where he might be possibly from and the theories that surround that. There's been a lot of theories going around lately about where Commander Commodo could possibly have originally been from. I even made one myself where I said, in all likelihood, Commander Commodo is probably from the Galar region. There was, however, another popular theory that popped up that stated that he could also possibly be from the Johto region for various reasons, and while the reasonings of that theory aren't necessarily something I personally subscribe to, I did actually come across something interesting about this game that would actually support that theory. 
Part of that theory states that the town that Commander Kamino originally came from, which is mentioned by Benny to have been completely destroyed by raging Pokemon, could have possibly been on the Lake of Rage, because there was going to be a town there at one point during development of the game, and we obviously know that Gyarados can be a rampaging type of Pokemon. In fact, it's even said that the rampaging of Gyarados is what created the Lake of Rage in the first place. And if we assumed this to be the case, then it would actually create a really interesting parallel between Pokemon Legends Arceus and Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, specifically with the beginning of each of their respective games. Because the beginning of Legends Arceus obviously has to do with you arriving in Jubilife Village, and Jubilife Village itself having just been founded, and the people of it trying to start a new life for themselves after having left their previous home. Meanwhile, the beginning of Diamond and Pearl has you watching a special TV broadcast about the Red Gyarados, which obviously is located within the Lake of Rage. So, if we assume this to be the case, that Komodo was from Johto in a town that sat next to the Lake of Rage, then both of these games, which released really close together and are also all about the Sinnoh region, would have beginnings that have to do with Gyarados and the Lake of Rage from Johto. And honestly, that's kind of a parallel connection that I could legitimately see Game Freak making. As far as whether Komodo is definitively from Johto or not, that's obviously still very much up in the air, because frankly, I like the Galar theory too, but if it was to be the case, this would be a very interesting connection. Some of the people within Legends Arceus that do not live within Jubilife Village, however, are the Miss Fortune Sisters. These troublemakers just like to, well, make trouble all throughout your adventure, and you end up battling them at multiple points throughout the game, even within the post-game where you can find them scattered across the Hisui region. And while they may be trying to harass you, their harassment is actually quite worth it, because once you defeat them in battle, they will actually drop some nuggets that you pick up afterwards that you can then sell for huge amounts of money. Within the game, this just seems like an easy way to get a lot of money really quick, but in terms of the lore, this in all likelihood is probably where the tradition of handing out prize money upon being defeated in a Pokemon battle actually originated, because obviously as we know within the time frame of this game, Pokemon battles and the organization of them hasn't really been founded yet, and you don't even get prize money within the few battles you do partake in, except for the battles with the Misfortune Sisters, which is why the tried and true tradition of handing out money upon losing a Pokemon battle most likely originated with the Misfortune Sisters, which honestly is just a really, really cool detail. To round off this video, we're going to look at a couple of pretty cool details that are found within the new Daybreak update for Pokemon Legends Arceus. Within this new update are several new side quests, one of which involves a man named Kochika, and his desire for you to quell the rage of an Alpha Onyx that has been spotted within the Ouroboro Tunnel in the Obsidian Fieldlands. Once you do this and then talk to Kochika afterwards, he will tell you about how he's looking to dig within the Ouroboro Tunnel and that there are apparently some stones in this area that can be made into statues of Pokemon. This is a very clear reference to the Grand Underground from Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl where you can find statues of Pokemon hidden all throughout the area. It is also possible that this could be referencing the creation of the Grand Underground itself, with Kochika as the potential founder of it, which if true, is yet another really cool reference. Another thing that Kochika mentions that he should be able to find once he gets a chance to dig in the Ouroboro Tunnel is coal. This information, according to him, comes from Leon, who obviously is a bit of a digger himself, and for most of the game also resides within the nearby Heartwood area. 
The fact that he also mentions coal specifically is very noteworthy because the Ouroburg mine within Diamond and Pearl and the remakes is predominantly a coal mine, which you can see in particular in the remakes due to the presence of literal coal on conveyor belts that is transporting material out of the mine. So given the fact that we know that Ouroburg Mine is a coal mine, Kochika apparently is going to be looking for coal in the Ouroboro Tunnel, which obviously is going to be nearby where Ouroburg City and the Ouroburg Mine would be founded, and he got that information from Leon, who also resides very nearby this area for most of the game in the Heartwood. This kind of all comes together to imply, at least in my opinion anyway, that Leon could have possibly been the founder of the Ouroburg Mine, or at least helped to found it. This isn't quite as definitive though, obviously, like pretty much all of the other secrets and easter eggs on this list, but I feel like it's pretty compelling and it's at the very least very, very interesting, so I thought it was worth a mention. And there we have it, everybody. Those were 10 more awesome secrets and Easter eggs from Pokemon Legends Arceus. I'm not sure at this point if I'm going to make another one of these videos, although I'm sure I could with all of the cool stuff that is in this game. So if you would like to see more of these kinds of videos, be sure to let me know in the comments below and leave this video a like if you enjoyed it. You can also subscribe if you're new for more new Pokemon content all the time. And if you like what I do here, consider checking out my Pokemon remixes on Spotify as well as other streaming services, because it makes such a huge difference in allowing me to make videos at all and is greatly, greatly appreciated. With that said, I will be back with another video very, very soon, and until then, as always, thank you guys so much for watching, I love you very much, and I will smell you guys later.